Yo guys, what's up? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to optimize whatever camera you're using, whether it's a phone, it's an APS-C little baby camera, or a full frame Bayamoth, something that's professional. We're not gonna be talking about technical specifications and how to do shutter and ISO. There's lots of videos on YouTube you can go watch about that stuff. My all time favorite is Caleb Pike from DSLR Video Shooter who goes into the extreme technical specs of how to maximize all your different cameras. Today we're gonna to be talking about the foundations, like what are the checklist items that you have to have at every shoot, whether it's on a phone or a dedicated camera. If you're new to the channel, smash that like button in the face. And if you're not new and you're a returning veteran, go and smash it three times in the face because it'll still go blue by the end of that for the YouTube algorithm. This is actually a two-part series. This first one's gonna be on how to optimize the video quality, the look of your image with these foundational principles. The next one is gonna be about audio quality and why I think audio quality is actually way, way more important than the quality of your video, obviously with diminishing returns. Like if the video's really terrible, it's gonna be bad. But if the audio is really terrible, no one will watch it, no matter how good the video quality looks. Rule number one, make sure your subject is not backlit. You wanna have the environment that the subject is in be brighter than the environment behind them if you're trying to focus on what they do. Now, that's not to say that you can't ever do this. You just need to know that this is what it's gonna look like if the light is actually coming from behind the person. And if it's direct light, like if that sunlight was actually on the back of my head, it would look even worse and it would really silhouette me and focus on that background. So I've tried to brighten the image here, as you can tell. So this is what happens when you make the brightness in the background appropriate, but the bright on the subject not as appropriate. However, if you can drop in a little light, I only have this little baby light right now because I'm traveling in quarantine with coronavirus to my parents' house to stay nice and safe with the kids. And so this is what it looks like if I were to put a light on someone's face. So now you might see that I've got this nice dynamic where it's like part of my face is lit. You get that nice jawline on somebody. And this can be really nice, especially if you can bring it up a little bit and tilt it down on me, which is what I would normally do with full gear. So to give you an example of what I'm working with here, this is my dad's backyard at the little pool area. So we've got a ton of daylight over here. We've got a bunch of shade in this area. And I had to kind of figure out how to use this daylight well because I didn't have any big fancy lights with me to create my own artificial light, especially indoors, which is ideal because it's quieter. You can lock yourself away from the kids and you can film better. So in this scenario, because I've got all this daylight coming over here, I've been filming against this chair right here. So I can really use that daylight, close all the blinds behind me so that there's no movement and have a nice, even consistent background, which is what you've been seeing like in the intro of this video. So when it comes to lighting, you really just wanna maximize the daylight to the best of your ability because it'll give you the most even skin tone if you don't have something like this or bigger lights to work with, especially indoors would be ideal. So this is great for run and gun because the same rules apply to phones. Let me give you an example. This is me talking to my iPhone camera with the light behind me. And this is me talking with the light coming from in front of me and lighting my face. Let's go on to the second topic, which is your depth. You might think that putting a subject against a flat wall, nice clean space would be a good idea. But in reality, there's lots of ways to optimize this. And the first is this depth principle. So here's me against a nice flat wall, just talking to you. It's interesting, it's clean. If that's the best you can do, that's the best you can do. And this is actually a great thing. Keep it symmetrical to the best of your ability. Make sure that audio is great and make sure it's clean. However, if I add just a little bit of depth from my position in my camera with whatever I have in the background, even if it's dirty right now, we don't have to get into that yet, but just creating that depth and see how much more livable and I don't know, just more comfortable this looks on camera. And so even if you're using a phone camera, this can really add a lot to your videos. And the closer you can get to the subject, the more telephoto you can get, the longer the lens you can use, the cooler the depth looks. And now just with a little bit of cleaning up and organizing this stuff, we can get this to look pretty cool, I think. Subject's gonna be centered right here. Let's get these things looking somewhat equivalent. Let me take the big one out so we can match the small ones. Perfect, clean this up a little bit. And you could end up with something that looks just a little bit nicer. And that brings us to our third point, which is set design. What exactly do you want around you? Do you want no bench in the back? Do you want no books on the table? Do you only want one book on the table? And that's for you to decide and you can kind of play with by just recording, deleting, recording, deleting until you get what you love. So you might be asking yourself, why do all the professionals film indoors when outside light is so great and you can manipulate it in so many cool ways? And that's because lighting changes outside when a cloud passes overhead or when the sun comes out, it really changes the way everything looks. And so I'm gonna let a little time lapse run here so you can get an idea of how much it actually changes. So that was 90 seconds of seeing what the light did to my face. 
Comment in below if you guys think that's a little too extreme for your projects or if that's not a big deal for you. And lastly, we're gonna talk about composition. And there's a really handy tool here that I love called the rule of thirds. And essentially it says you can take your frame, you break it up into thirds, right? So one third on each side here, and then one third, which is the center of the frame. And you can cut me so that it's like, boom, there's a bunch of space over here, two thirds of the frame or so, or boom, there's two thirds of the space over here or so. If you keep me in the middle, it's obviously big and focused. If you wanna put anything like text on the side, or if you just wanna have that empty space, I really like that look, you can keep two thirds on one or the other side of the frame. A lot of documentaries and a lot of people I've heard about in the film industry talk about how people on the left side of the frame talking towards this direction can actually be really helpful in telling a story, saying it's like the beginning of a story because we read from left to right, at least in America. If you have someone on the right side of the frame, it might start to signify that you're near the end of a story because they're on the end of the frame. So this is your last choice that you need to make of how do I want to frame someone? Generally, the center looks a little more amateur. And if you do a rule of thirds where you put someone on the left side of the frame or the right side of the frame, it looks a little more mature in my eyes. But that's for you to decide and each project can be very different. So if you see here, I've got the daylight coming in from this side and I've got my little artificial light coming over from here. But if I clip this off just to review some of the stuff we've talked about, now I'm gonna be getting this really dynamic shot with only the daylight and it looks a little more amateur. So if you wanna go and pick up one of these little lights, I'll put a description in the link below and I'll also put a description to my big Mongo light that I use, which is not as technical as it sounds or it looks, but it's so helpful and it makes you look beautiful when you attach the soft box that I've also linked below, which is an entirely different video we're gonna get into at some point is where do you get the best lighting sources from? And if you wanna see the technical details on that, I would also go check out Caleb Pike with DSLR Video Shooter because he's amazing for this type of technical detail. So to summarize, we started with light, probably the most important thing in filming and just saying if you're filming outside or inside, how can you use that natural light or artificial light to make your subjects look great? Secondly, we talked about how not to use natural light to your disadvantage and how to optimize it if you use something like an artificial light that you could buy somewhere and set up to make your lighting look more even all the time, even indoors if you have that luxury. Thirdly, we talked about depth and using that to the best of your advantage. So if you have a big open space like this, how far can I get away from the background so it makes it look really professional and nice and of course if you get super far from the background it's gonna look really professional and that may not be good for your audience depending on what type of content you're producing fourthly we talked a little bit about set design and how you can place certain items around you to make the background look really interesting I like this little part of the outdoor area because it's nice and busy with all this stuff that's going on behind me but not so busy that it's distracting I didn't close the curtains today so if the kids came and photobombed it all that happened. And lastly, we talked about the rule of thirds so you can get your composition and your framing to look a little bit less beginner and a little more awesome. The next episode of this series is gonna be on how to get your audio quality to be through the roof. And as you've seen today, I've been switching mics the whole time and I hope it's been sounding pretty great. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to film a video talking about this to help you maximize whatever gear you have and to recommend some stuff that you might wanna get. So thank you so much for watching. Punch that like button in the face three times if you're a veteran, one time if you're a newbie, and I'll see you in the next episode.